Jay's Tunnel. Today we're going to be talking to you about a lot of stuff washing up called sargasm. Now, sargasm is a brown algae that grows out, uh, starts out in the Atlantic in the Sargasso Sea, and then uh, the currents and wind bring it up here to our beach here in Texas. But you might be thinking, is it good? Is it bad? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, both of those things. So there, there are a number of really good things uh, about this sargasm that washes up. Uh, one of them being that it's got a lot of nutrients in it. And so as this breaks down when it's on the beach, it dries up, it starts turning this blackish looking color. Um, and then as it breaks up, it washes over the, uh, or, or gets blown over the dunes. And then it's the nutrients for the vegetation and stuff growing on the backside of the island. So uh, very good in that sense. When it's in the water, it's very good for structure. So think about if you were living in the ocean and you're a little critter, uh, a fish, a crab, you know, shrimp, something like that, and you don't have anywhere to hide behind. This uh, sargasm actually gives you something to hide behind. So it, the, one of the cool things, if you're at the beach and you see this, and you see this floating in the water, shake it out real good, and you'll be amazed at the kind of stuff that comes out of there. There's about 100 species that, that live in and around uh, sargasm. So, uh, you know, very important uh, for the environment. Now, is it bad when there's too much of it? Like say there's uh, a lot of it washing up like there is right now? Actually, this isn't too bad if you consider about, I don't know, it was eight or 10 years ago, we, we had like four foot bluffs of it washing in. But it can be bad when there's that much of it. And um, think about all the birds and stuff that are feeding around here. You know, uh, if they like feeding on clams that are in the, the shore, shore break, are they gonna be able to get to that uh, if all the seedweed's there? Um, you know, maybe not. Um, some other things, uh, especially if you like uh, seagrass or corals, it can shade the light if there's too much of it. So it can actually hurt the seagrass or the corals uh, that need light to grow. Here in Texas, you know, people come to the beach for tourism. So think economics. Uh, we actually have a number of different cities and counties that maintain the beach. And, you know, so that people like clean beaches. So they'll come along, scrape it up. And there's a number of different things they can do to it. They can take it to the landfill. They can put it behind the dunes uh, so that it can actually be nutrients for vegetation back there. Uh, but, you know, if there's a little bit, they can keep it there, but if there's a lot, they usually try to remove it from the beach uh, because of ecotourism and people coming to the beach. So, um, oh, people actually eat this too. Um, so, like uh, in Japan, um, you know, there's a way that you can get kind of the arsenic out of it. These, these actually have really high concentrations of arsenic, but there's a way that you can uh, clean them and prepare them to where it can be eaten. And so there are a couple of other countries that do eat this. Uh, people can uh, wash off the salt and you can fertilize your yard with it because of the nutrients that it has. So, you know, there's, there's good and bad for this washing up, but one of the favorite things I have is actually get, getting it right out of the water, shaking it out into a bucket and seeing all the organisms that come out. So next time you're at the beach, you see some of this floating, go grab you some, get a bucket, shake it out and see what you find. All right, till next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye.